you know, forgiveness has intrigued me for a long time. Okay? And in the many classes that I've been teaching, quite often the source of pain and the source of suffering comes from a heart that is still harboring a lot of pain and anger and hurt. And this can be directed to a person who has hurt us, or maybe even directed towards ourselves. And as I learn more about self-compassion, I realize that forgiveness is not all or none situation that we must forgive or we must not forgive. It's actually a process. And in a way, it's a process that you may be thinking of embarking on and that's why you are here today. In my research over the months and years about forgiveness, I've drawn heavily on these uh, sources. Definitely very much on the book of forgiving by Desmond Tutu and his daughter. So Desmond Tutu, of course, you know, passed away in December. I also drew quite heavily on the teachings of uh, Jack Confield and of my self-compassion, uh, mindful self-compassion teachers, Steve Hickman and uh, Christopher Germer. So if you are interested in this, to go deeper after this session, uh, these are the books that I would recommend. For today's session, what I'll do is distill some of this that I um, read and also what I've experienced and end with a practice to help us uh, maybe face the possibility of forgiveness. So what is forgiveness? What is forgiveness? It has been defined as an intentional and voluntary. So it cannot be forced and it cannot be or just by chance it happened. It's a very intentional process and it has to come from yourself, from the heart. I want to do it. And it's done by the person who may initially feel that I've been victimized, I've been harmed. And this person undergoes a change in how the feelings and the attitude have been and about an offense, or about a hurt, about an injustice. And it's able then to change these feelings, the energy of these feelings into something positive. So overcoming the negative and making it into a healing energy. Some have also defined forgiveness as giving up all hope that the past is different, which in a way is quite true. Yeah, you give up hope that it's different. It's not different. Okay? It, what has happened has happened. So why do we forgive? I'm not sure whether I can see your chat from here. Uh, Nabin, can I see people chatting? Um, Maybe I stop share for a moment. It's easier. Maybe just type in the chat. Why do you think we need to forgive? Why not just let it be? Why do we need to forgive? Any answer? The only way I can see you is through your chat. So I will. Yeah. So why do you think we need to forgive? Anyone just type in the chat? It's a process of letting go. Set ourselves free to be happy, to be at peace. We hurt ourselves and let them go. Yeah, yeah. Hey, why are you all here? You all know the answers. <laughs> yeah, why a person we need to forgive is ourselves. Yes, me. Um, today's session will apply also if the target is ourselves. Even though I'll be focusing a lot about forgiving others, but the same principle also apply. Or selfish reason for ourselves in reality. Holding on. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. So, yes. So, you have the. Um, you actually got most of the answers. Why forgive? Because it's for actually for us. Someone says it's selfish. Indeed, it's for my own wellness, my physical wellness, my mental wellness. So, it's my health. Secondly, it offers freedom, like what some of you say. Freedom from what? Freedom from the past. Freedom from the person who might have done us harm or who has indeed done us harm. Freedom from continuing to be a victim. As long as we hang on to the unforgiveness, we are still the victim. 
And as a victim, it's sometimes hard to move forward. So some of you say, I can't move forward because I'm still a victim. But if you free yourself from being a victim, then you can move on and rewrite your story. You don't have to hang on to the past, the story that you totally believe in, and you can't move on. In many families, forgiveness can heal, not just us, but our families and communities. Desmond Tutu wrote this book with a lot of experience. He was chairing the Commission of Truth and Reconciliation in South Africa. I know they went through a terrible period of discrimination, of victimization. And more, thousands of people came forward when he was chairing this commission to talk about their hurt. And not just the victims, perpetrators too. And they come together and the healing process, the reconciliation process started for many of them. So it can heal. It can heal families, it can heal communities. Many of us may know families have co wars. Personally, I have a brother who has not spoken to my mom for 18 years. And he's causing a lot of pain because forgiveness does not come and the pain continues. So we choose, we choose to forgive so that we do not suffer physically or mentally or suffer the corrosive effects of hanging on to the anger, to the hatred, the resentment. And in a way, if we can also widen our view and see, is there one person who's totally right or is there one person who's totally wrong? In a way, we're all interconnected. If given the same circumstances, who is to say I will not behave in the same way? So sharing that part that we're all humans, we're all interconnected and our action affects each other. Okay? Whether it's from the original hurt or from the inability to forgive, it all causes more hurt. And finally, it's really a gift that we give to ourselves. Okay? It's a gift that we give to ourselves. So the next question I want to ask, what forgiveness, what are some myths about forgiveness? So forgiveness was all the above thing, but what forgiveness is not? Can anyone think of forgiveness is not? Some people refuse to forgive because they hang on to certain misconception about forgiveness. What do you think some of these beliefs are? Consenting to future hurt. Yes. Yes. Lose face. Yeah. Justice. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only thing we are wrong. It's weakness. Absolutely. That it condones the wrongdoing. That is a very big, big reason. If I forgive you, means I agree to what you have done. And I let you off. Okay? Um, I let you off your punishment. Forgiveness, not forgotten. Yeah. yeah, forgiveness. Some people say, to forgive means I must forget everything that has ever, ever happened. We think we are wrong. Let's not take away what happened. It does not change the past, indeed. So then, what are some of these? How do we address some of these? Forgiveness, first of all, is not easy. It requires a strong intention and a willingness to forgive. Forgiveness is not weakness. First, forgiveness means I'm willing to pick up my courage and my strength to face what has happened and to allow myself to change from becoming a victim to a hero. That I can now write my story forward. Forgiveness does not subvert justice. Doesn't mean I forgive you, you run away scot-free, but it creates a space for justice to be enacted with the purpose of targeting the issue. Okay? So the person has done something, can we look at the issue? Or do we really just want to punish the person for the sake of punishing the person and bypass what actually caused the problem? Okay, so we are looking at the issue and not the, the, the person only. Forgiveness is definitely not forgetting. In fact, it allows us to hold on to what has happened, but without that suffering, that hurt to our health. 
mental health, physical health. So you, it requires, again, a fearless courage to say, I will remember what happened, but I will not allow what happened to continue to hurt me. And forgiveness is a very slow process. So you may come today just to find out about forgiveness. And I just want to say, it's not a process that can be forced, can be sped up. It takes time. It takes time. The heart has been hurt for a long time. And I need you to really allow yourself to acknowledge that it has happened and the pain is real. And in all loss and grief, there is a process before forgiveness can take place. Okay? So go easy on yourself. And today's session really is just scratching the tip of the iceberg because we only have about 45 minutes. But it's enough, hopefully, to get us started on the process. Desmond Tutu came up with this uh, cycle. I'm not sure how many of you are as old as I am. When I went through a stage where I read books in uh, martial arts, Chinese martial arts, in the old world, you know, sword fighting, everything. Wow, you killed my father, I'll kill your uncle, I'll kill your brother. And there's a word that says, you know, if you keep on going on, when is it going to end? Okay, so this is how the revenge cycle goes. First, there was harm, hurt, or loss. And that caused pain. And because I'm hurt, I'm in pain, I'm going to choose to harm you back. I refuse to see, but how can we be common humanity? You have done me this great injustice, so I just want to hurt you back. So I take revenge, I retaliate, I make sure you pay back in different ways. And that will just end up with more violence and more cruelty. And that's how not just between people, between nations, and that perpetuates and it becomes a cycle. You go on hurting, harming, and then in the end, you do not even know who is right and who is wrong anymore. Desmond Tutu and his daughter proposed another possible cycle. Can we spin out of this revenge cycle? When we're having the pain, that's where we have a choice. In this moment of choice, what do we choose? Do we choose to continue the harm? Or do we want to choose healing for ourselves, first of all? And he has proposed uh, four steps. Like if we want to choose healing, there are a few things we should do, uh, which I'll elaborate a little bit more in the next few slides. Like telling the story, we have to tell the story. Sometimes we run away, we don't want to tell the story ever again, but we need to tell the story. And name the hurt that was done, acknowledge it, validate it, it was painful. And then begin to forgive and maybe grant forgiveness. And when this stage is reached, it may take months, it may take years, then you decide, do I want to renew the relationship with this person, whether it's a friend or a family member or colleague, or maybe it's time to release, to release that relationship and both are valid. And this is where he said it's a forgiveness cycle. Instead of perpetuating the revenge, we have to break it at the point when we feel the pain. And telling the story means you are prepared to tell the truth instead of coloring it or put salt and pepper into everything, but just speaking the truth with the facts, what really happened. You can tell your story first to a friend, to someone you trust, someone you love that will not use the story against you. If, if at all possible, maybe you can tell the story to the person who harmed you, if it's possible or if it's realistic. Maybe the person has passed away. You can also write a letter, and the letter never needs to be posted or read by anyone else, but just writing down the facts of what happened. And this will then gradually, gradually allow us, because we are telling the story, opening up, to accept what, that whatever has happened cannot be changed or undone. It has happened. So again, this is an important phrase. Forgiveness means giving up all hope for a better past. There can only be a better future, but not a better past.
So naming the herd, once you have told the story, sometimes maybe in the process of telling the story, you name the pain. What were the feelings? Feelings in my heart, in my body, in my mind. And to validate that, you were hurt. So you, therefore you felt that way. It's nothing, it's not wrong, it's not bad. It is valid. Okay? And that there are stages of grief we go through. Maybe you want to deny it, maybe you want to negotiate, bargain that it never happened, or you're really angry. There might be stages and you honour whatever stage you happen to be in at this moment, knowing that this is all part of our healing process. Find someone who will listen to you, someone who will say, hey, I know exactly what to do. No, this person should not be trying to fix you, but just sitting there, compassionately listening and allowing you to tell your story. And then know that you are vulnerable. Of course you are vulnerable. The heart has been hurt. There was pain. And only, only move forward when ready. Quite often we need to stay in this stage to acknowledge the hurt and say, what can I do to hold this hurt? Do I need to talk to a counsellor? What do I need to do? Okay, so recognising is important. Granting forgiveness, a long process. It is a choice. When you are ready, you forgive. You are not ready yet. It's okay. Because we are only human. But at least know that it's a possibility. And even if you just form an intention, maybe not yet forgiving, but I form an intention, maybe, maybe I can start thinking about it. That's already a growth. It's already a process. And that will then slowly help us move from being a victim to a hero in our story. And if we're able to tell a story, we know the healing process has start, started. So in his book, Desmond Tutu spoke of a, a girl, 17-year-old Australian girl, just got her driving license and she needed to go to school urgently. One day and the father say oh um i have too many things to do and she was really excited oh father is busy means i can take the car and i can drive so she drove she drove up a hill a bit too fast and she hit an elderly lady and the lady died so there was a police interview and during the police interrogation the police say how fast were you going and she said something like, I think it was so years, years ago, I think it was something like 50 miles an hour. The police say, how fast were you going? Because that's way above the speed limit. And he kept asking till he, she said 30. Ah, then he said, oh, 30, that's within the speed limit. You are free, you can go home. She went home and the mom said, you are never ever going to tell this to anyone because you'll ruin your life if you do. She held on to the story and she eventually could not live with it, she left home. She had failed relationship. She just felt that she's not living her life. She could not move on. 30 years later, she went back to Australia. She looked for the family and she asked for forgiveness. It took that long. Okay, so if we do not tell the story, if we keep it inside, that's not yet the start of healing. But the moment you're able to say, say the healing starts. So if the stage comes when you're able to forgive, then you have to decide. Do I want to renew the relationship? Some of you say, hey, forgiving is forgetting. May not be. Maybe you don't want to renew, you want to release the relationship. Nobody asks you to go and hug the person who hurt you or to kiss the person who hurt you again. Maybe that will never happen. Because the forgiveness is not for that person, it's for you. So the preference is, if it's possible to renew, let's say you're in a family or same community, you do, but sometimes there's a question of safety. Then you don't. Okay? And in the renewing of relationship, sometimes there might be an exchange that is needed. Could be an apology. Could be if the person has taken something physically, 
person may have to return it. If the person has violated some, something in the law, then the law will have to step in. Okay, so it doesn't mean forgiveness means the person gets off free. Okay, so you may need an apology, an explanation, a tangible project, or maybe just never to see the person again. Perhaps it's also a good time to look at was there anything my part in the conflict? Sometimes, sometimes it takes two hands to clap, sometimes not. So it's just really looking at it objectively. What was my part? So when you renew a relationship, you become stronger. That's why you become a hero, not a victim, not continuing being a victim. But the relationship will never be the same again. And that is something we have to acknowledge. Yeah. So, but you free yourself from being a victim. You free yourself from the trauma. That's why it's not an easy process. It's not an easy process. And this is the last stage in the long journey of forgiveness. So there is a, what is the self-compassionate approach? What's the self-compassionate approach? It is formulated by Chris Germer in recognition that forgiveness is difficult. Forgiveness may be a long process. Can we just begin to reflect on it? Just easing ourselves towards the direction, no rushing. So it's a very compassionate, tender process. And allowing the process to unfold, constantly being curious, investigating to how the body is, how the mind is, how the heart is, investigate, investigating into what really happened. Okay. And being very attentive towards what you need right now. He proposed five steps. And there are two processes. One is for forgiving others and one is for forgiving self. So I think looking at the time today, maybe we will do the steps on forgiving ourselves. And it's the same steps of forgiving others. It's the same step for forgiving ourselves. It's just changing the, the subject, the person. Okay. And the five steps I will guide you through, so not to worry, which is opening up to the pain. So when I'm guiding you, I ask you to think of a situation where the hurt is not yet tremendous, we are learning how to forgive. So don't choose a situation where it's really, really, really hard for you to forgive. Maybe choose something smaller uh, where it's possible to forgive. Where it's possible to forgive. Okay. So maybe on a scale of 10, think of 3. A hurt that is about the level of 3. Maybe a, a driver was very rude to you. Okay. or someone cut into your line while you're waiting, cut you, okay. painful or because you're rushing. Maybe um, someone you expected to be nice to you was not so nice, was grumpy. Okay, so enough to cause you some hurt and pain or rejection, but so and that you can still carry on. So you have an intention to forgive this person. Okay. And once we start to investigate that pain, we will then, step two will be responding. I'll guide you through the various self-compassion, compassionate way that you can respond. And third one is to tapping into the wisdom. So if at any time you feel that it's a bit overwhelming, please take care of yourself. If you feel that I just want to give myself compassion because I'm, pain, I'm hurting, then please stop there. I may give you the instruction of moving on to the third step of tapping the wisdom. You say, no, nah, I'm not ready yet. Because tapping the wisdom requires us to see the situation of what happened. And maybe to even find a reason for what happened. If you are ready with a lot of curiosity, we can go into step three. And then, and then forming an intention to forgive. All right, beginning. Forming an intention. This is not forgiveness yet, it's just forming an intention. And quite importantly, in this process, we need to protect ourselves okay, at any stage so that the pain is not overwhelming. And to protect ourselves from further hurt by the same person or by the same kind of incident. 